<laughs> yeah, many Americans will spend the 4th of July barbecuing, but for a growing number, traditional meat will not be on the menu. In today's Morning Rounds, we look at the rising popularity and health effects of plant-based meat. Impossible Burger and Beyond Burger have exploded in popularity. The two alternative meat brands are available in more than 40,000 restaurants now and grocery stores combined. Dr. Tara Narula is at the table. We should note Tara comes from a house divided. Yeah. She's a vegetarian. Her husband eat meat, eats meat. Tara, hi. Yeah, I like your husband. I know. So what's in, these, in this meat? Well, this is so interesting because actually these companies are not necessarily catering to people like me who are vegetarian, but to my husband, those yeah. who eat meat. They're they want us. They do. Yeah. And so they're mimicking the taste and the texture, the chew, the sizzle, and even the bleed. Uh, so the bleed. <laughs> that is yes, weird. Which is yes. pretty amazing. Yeah. So when you compare the Beyond Burger, for example, and Impossible Burger, they're relatively similar, but they differ in kind of the key components of their protein. So Beyond Burger uses a pea-based protein. Impossible uses a soy-based protein. And then they both have mixtures of some oils in them, either canola oil or coconut oil. Um, and interestingly, also, you find the Beyond Burger in the meat section. There are specific Specifically putting it there because right. they want to capture that market. Yeah. Can you capture the taste or maybe you're not supposed to really capture the taste? Let well, it be what it is. One of the differences between the two is Impossible Burger claims that they have found the reason that meat tastes like meat and that's something called heme. So heme is an iron containing molecule. You may have heard of hemoglobin or myoglobin. Yes. All animals and plants have it and they basically have extracted this from the roots of soy plants and then grown it in yeast wow. and then taken that heme and put it in their burger. And they're saying that that mimics the flavor, the aroma, the taste Which in your mouth. Which one is that? Impossible, Impossible burger. Okay. Yeah. So are they healthy? These yeah. plant-based burgers, are they healthy or healthier? Right. So that's really a great question. And not always. So just because something says it's plant-based doesn't mean it's healthy. So you do have to read the labels. When you look at the labels of these two, for example, again, they're relatively similar in terms of calories. So about 250 calories, 20 grams of protein. They have a fair amount of sodium in them. So that's something okay. to note, 400 milligrams. And they have a decent amount of saturated fat. Again, about six to eight, millig uh, six to eight milligrams. And the recommendation, I'm sorry, grams, is to have 13 uh, per day. So six to eight is already a fair amount. Um, and then they all have no cholesterol. So, you know, they, they are relatively healthy. It's not something you'd want to put in your diet every single day, but you can build it in. And we should say little known fact, Tara Narula and Julian Castro were classmates at Stanford. Oh, yes. really? They had a little reunion in the oh, green room. Wow. My freshman yeah. dorm. It was, wow. Yes. <laughs> Anything well, else you want to say about okay that? Or no? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I'll leave it there. I don't want to get into <laughs> yes. trouble with Tara. <laughs> no, I won't. No, they're both happily year. married. Uh, <laughs> they they weren't married. then, though. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tara.